Hey guys, here's a little progress update. I've got all the paper caps replaced in this area. Just finishing up down here where there are some old repairs. Now uh, I've found a few old repairs in this set and some of them were not the right value. Like this guy, 0.5, and this was actually about 10 times the value it was supposed to be. It should be a 0.05. This big thing was stuck in here, so I think these may very well be the wrong value as well. Probably uh, whoever was working on this used whatever they had on hand just to get it going again. And sometimes if it's like a coupling cap, eh, the value is not necessarily all that critical, and uh, especially if you go larger in value. Uh, so I'm going to be moving on to the electrolytics and power resistors soon. I got a couple down here that actually stick down through the chassis. And remember, uh, most of the circuitry is referencing a minus 55 volt bus, which is why I think you see things like this where it's actually isolated from the chassis. And uh, it's not going to ground. So we've got these two to replace, and there's one in here, and there's one tucked back in there. And, oh yeah, we got one in there, and another guy there, and another guy there. D-mount did not skimp on the ultralytic filter caps, that's for sure. Ah, uh, so, uh, I just took a little trip over to my storage locker to see if I could scrounge up a yoke, and I tell you, I really, really regret that over the years as I've been squirreling away parts that I did not keep an inventory now they are scattered amongst several boxes, some of which are really buried. So, uh, uh, after a while I got tired of looking and I grabbed one that at least is the right deflection angle. Uh, the reference I found was a Thordarson Y6. And I think Stankor probably used similar conventions, so a DY-6 is probably the same as a Y6. So this is as a DY8, so it's not technically uh, a replacement, but I'm thinking it'll be close enough. So it's got the right deflection angle. Deflection angle being the angle here. The older the CRT, uh, typically the larger the deflection angle. So like the first 10 inch CRTs or 12 inch like in this Admiral down here would be 54 degrees. And they went to 70 and then 90 and then like 110 with uh, the very shallow predicta CRTs. Uh, I'm pretty sure this had a 17 BP4 in it, and uh, that would be a 70 degree, I do believe. So this should be appropriate, at least on that regard. Covers falling apart a little bit. So what would be different? Well, we've got some damping resistors in here, 560 ohm. That's no problem. There's a cap, I gotta dig out what the value is on that, but there's also some extra resistors in here which uh, this does not call for. I could clip those out. And here is the schematic for the yoke. And then there's the impedance, the actual windings. So what I'm hoping for is that it's close enough. Uh, I just want to get the set working. Uh, it doesn't need to be a absolute perfect uh, screen geometry because uh, well, it's going to go back in the cabinet with the proper yoke after I'm done. And if this doesn't work out well, I can always go digging up another one. Now, something else I want to take a break and look at is what is in this box that just arrived. What was in the box? A book on servicing and troubleshooting televisions in particular. Vintage televisions, because this was published in the early 50s. The original edition was from the 40s, and I think this is the third edition from around 51 to 52. We'll take a close look at a moment. So I often get asked, how do I know how to work on these old sets? Well, I'll tell you, I had no mentor, I had no teacher. Uh, I learned it by doing it, and uh, quite a bit I've learned from reading books like this, reading old magazines and reading all the great restoration diaries guys have posted online in the forums and in their private websites.
Now this book in particular I picked up because I saw one of you guys post about it, I think on Facebook, and I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was that posted about it. And he recommended it as being a very good book. I've got a pretty decent library, but this one I had not heard of. I've certainly heard of Coin, but I had not seen this book before. Got a nice image on the inside. I like the little sepia tone on that. Color television in action. Now that's interesting because this book was published before there was commercial color television, so it looks like it's the old CBS system. Huh. St. Luke's in Chicago, too. Definitely an experimental setup. I think we will see. This is, well, it's even older than I thought. So the first edition was 49. This is the second edition from 50, it looks like. So four years before RCA sold the first color TV. So what have we got in here? Well, we've got servicing methods, service instruments, like scopes and sweep generators and marker generators and so on, uh, a section on tuners, sound, IF, alignment of IF, alignment of the sound, alignment of tuners, video detection and amplifiers, picture tube, driving circuits, I assume that's what they mean by input circuits, sync suction, sweep oscillator, AFC, sweep amplifiers, picture tube servicing and adjusting, power supply, antennas, and finally it's got to be some preliminary stuff on Color TV and UHF because neither one of those have gone live when this was published. So if you get your hands on some of these old books, a lot of the stuff is uh, covered again and again. So I think they sometimes even use the same images in different publications. But uh, what's good about this book? From what I've seen, is that it's got a good fundamental, uh, good description of how the fundamentals work in these TVs, and then it has some practical info on how to service this stuff. And uh, especially on the uh, service instruments, it explains to you how they work and how to hook them up. Those are questions I see asked quite a bit. Like, how do you hook up a sweep generator? How do you use it? Well, they cover that in here. So even though I did pretty much know all this stuff, it's still nice to see it. Sometimes you get a fresh perspective, some, in, some techniques you might not have read about before, and I just flat out enjoy reading about this stuff. I also like when they have... Uh, circuits from actual production TVs and not just all theory. So it'll definitely be a good read. Let's jump to that last section see what they have to say about color TV. What's cool about this last section in here is it's actually on glossy paper and printed in color, at least some of the photos are color. It's a picture of a control studio. Very early equipment. So, not exactly color photos, more like uh, hand-colored black and white photos. So, prototype color TV camera. <laughs> Why could they just have her in color? Somebody must have hand colored these. So there's the uh, one of the early systems they tried with the uh, scanning discs. So it was actually a black and white CRT, and you'd spin a red uh, a disc with transparent red, uh, green, and blue sections on it. And that would be synchronized to three black and white TV cameras with color filters in the front of them. And if you get everything set up right and spinning at the right speed, you'd actually get a pretty decent color image. 
or you could use three projection CRTs going through a lens and got to get everything focused and set up just right and you can get a decent image with that too. So here's how that camera works. So three individual pickup tubes One for each of the primary colors. It's another experimental system where instead of projecting CRTs through a lens and onto a screen, they actually had them projecting up onto a partially uh, mirrored piece of glass, it looks like. Another similar system with three, three tubes and a mirror. Very complicated way to do it. Well, not that the way they ended up doing it is exactly simple with the, the dot matrix. And having three color phosphors on one CRT. So here's you can actually get uh, adapter kits, put a scanning or a color wheel in front of a conventional black and white TV and modify some of the circuitry inside. So here's sort of what they ended up making, only the electron, three electron guns are all at one end, going this way, not a triangle like that. Well, I'm just surprising amount of detail for uh, for a book that's really about servicing actual production TVs, just to devote this much of the book to experimental systems, none of which were ever actually used. It's certainly interesting to read. Alright, so this will definitely be a good read, so... Sorry, I don't remember who posted about it, but thank you for the suggestion. Uh, it's definitely a, a worthwhile book to get a hold of.